food. And that is the essence of ethnobotany. Wow, what a beautiful oak tree canopy we have over us. This is Nancy Swearingen. She's with the University of California Botanical Garden in Berkeley. Nancy, do you think that the native people here would have been able to survive without the oak? I think they would have had a really tough time because acorns provide such an important source of carbohydrate and protein. They can, the acorns can be stored over the winter. It would have been an even tougher life than it was. Why do you think that we are so interested in ethnobotany now? Well, ethnobotany, which is the study of how people can use plants, has really taken off probably in the last 15 years or mm -hmm. so because finally we are understanding that plants are the source of very important products for people. Starting locally, you know what a willow tree looks like. Did you know that it's the source for aspirin? And where would we be without aspirin? I know These my elbow patients. would hurt a lot more. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Um, to the relatively recent discovery of Taxol, a chemical that's widely used in cancer therapy these days. So the tropical rainforest particularly is full of plants that haven't even been identified and who knows what useful chemicals they might yield. Plants and people have been relying on each other since time began. Brian Kimball of the Bancroft Garden in Walnut Creek, California, knows all about the traditional uses of plants by people. Now, other than the obvious, Brian, name some other things that these plants can be used for. Well, for example, uh, these century plants, or agaves, have a very strong fiber in the leaf. And that can be extracted and used to make rope with, or also uh, woven, used to make nets with, and uh, things of that sort. So that was much used by native peoples. What about uh, a food source? Yes, they did have a food source as well. When this plant gets ready to flower, energy builds up in the middle of the plant, which gets quite fat and swollen with sugars and starches uh, in preparation to push the flower. And at that stage, it can be cut off and roasted and eaten. And in addition to that, the juice from it can be fermented and made into a beverage called pulque. Uh, this was so important to the Aztecs that they actually had a special god for agaves because it was a principal plant in, in their uh, uses. All right, well, you mentioned some of the fibers. They look so succulent, I wouldn't think that there would be so many uses for the fibers of these plants, but you can actually use them for clothing in a way? Yes, you can, and uh, even uh, the sharp tip can be snapped off, okay. and when you do so, fiber comes along with it and makes an instant needle and thread that can be used to sew with. Wow. So that was valuable when you couldn't just run to the store and get a needle and thread. Uh, these stalks that come out when the plant flowers were also much used in desert areas where there are not uh, wood uh, sources to be used, then these would function as uh, lodge poles for uh, a house or fence posts or things like that. So gotta they have, were. Gotta have something to hold up your tent, right? Yep, yeah. And that worked. All right, Brian, thank you. That's fascinating. Well, you're very welcome. Not all science happens in a test tube. For instance, lots of people have used aloe to treat wounds. Bottle it up and today we call it science. Our ancestors, they called it survival. The problem is gonna be a challenge. It